Elementor has launched a new feature called the Hotspot feature. It's pretty cool. What you can do is you can add points to an image and when you hover over these images or you click on mobile, you will see more information about that specific spot. This is of course cool for products that have lots of different parts or for example for a web shop that has an outfit where you want to link to different items of that outfit. So Elementor has made a tutorial where they showed you how to do this, which is this tutorial. But I think this design is a little bit boring. It's just a black box with a title and a text and some round uh, white circles. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to spice it up a little bit and test how far we can stretch this. So what I've done is uh, on this page, which, which I've used for another tutorial for the blur header actually, I've added a new section as you can see right here with the hotspot feature. Uh, so when you hover over these images, you can see a blurred background uh, with rounded edges. This is the simple one. Uh, this is also a simple one. But over here, I have added a color uh, price. And over here, I have added a button. It's not so easy to add a button, so you will need a little trick for this. Um, but if you know how to do this, you can use this feature with a little bit more design control, which is what I like. Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. For this tutorial, you will need to copy and edit a little bit of CSS. So I've made things super easy for you and added this page to the Liverman Pixels website with everything that you need for this tutorial. So I'll put this link in the description. What you wanna do is you wanna go to a page where you wanna add your hotspot. So here I have the exact same page, but then without the hotspot feature. So what you can do now, is um, search for hotspot as you can see right here hotspot is now part of the widgets uh, before we're going to add all the cool customizations i first want to show you the basics let's just go over it quickly uh, because it's very straightforward as you can see you start out with a background image and one tooltip as you can see right here when you click on it the text becomes visible uh, the colors the fonts everything right here is uh, defined by your site settings so whatever you've set up in your site settings as default text default colors it will use that in your website so that it's already part of your design uh, on your website which is of course super nice so you can set up your image right here for example, I have this image, which is a speaker with a nice background. Uh, as you can see, a glow background looks pretty cool. And then over here in hotspot, you can have your different hotspots. Right now, we only have one, which is black. Now it's over here, you can't really see it. So let's first quickly change the color so you can actually see what we're doing. So go to the style, go to hotspot, over the color, big white over here, and then it's white. Now my image has changed for some reason. So what you need to do is go back to content and put this on center. If you wanna make sure it's centered, if you wanna make sure it's also 100% width, go to style and place it again at 100 because sometimes it just scales for no reason. I don't know why, but this is how you set it up. So if you go back to the content tab, you can see the tab over here, hotspot. So now we have one hotspot. So if you click on it, you can add a label. The label is the text. So for example, hot spot one. It's massive. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's massive. You can add your link over here, even a dynamic link if you want and an icon if you want to. So that's pretty nice. For example, an icon like this. Of course, you can change the styling, uh, the size and everything. And you can add the text of your tooltip here. So let's add a one over here. When you click, you can see the text over here. But on websites for desktop, you don't want people to click on it. You want to show the text if you hover over them. So how you can do that is just close this tab over here, then go to the tooltip, and then the trigger should be hover. And you can set this up per desktop, uh, tablet, and mobile, because on mobile, there is no hover. So then on mobile, you will need to do the click. So now, as you can see, the hover creates this. Pretty cool. The animation that you're seeing right here is called expand. You can also do soft beat, which is very intense <laughs> with a big text like this. Not very nice. I'm gonna just put it at expand. For now, for this tutorial, I'm not gonna use the text, uh, but I just wanted to show you that, that you can also start with a text. I'm also not gonna use the icon, and then it will just be a dot, which I think is a very clean look, looks super nice. So just know you can place a text and an icon if you want to, or just an icon. But when you delete both, it just becomes a dot. If you wanna change your position, you just go to position and you can change that over here. So let's say we wanna add 
hotspot on the button over here at the top, you just put it like that. And this is a little bit confusing because you see here custom tooltip properties. You think you are customizing the position of the tooltip, right? But this is if you want to position for the text box uh, in a different place. So for example, on my website, you can see now the box of text is on the left and here it's on the right. So that's what you can set up over here, custom tooltip. So for this, we want the text box to be on the left. As you can see right here. Now the text box is on the left. So item number one is just dot number one. If we, for example, duplicate the first one, we have a second one. Now it's precisely above it. So of course you wanna change the position. And there you go, there's your second one. And for example, for this one, you don't want it on the left, you want it on the right. And here you have it. Super easy to do, as you can see. You can also set up the width of the tooltip. And again, the tooltip is this box of text, right? This is called the hotspot, this is called the tooltip. So you can set up the width if you want to. For my design, I'm gonna use this number, Okay, so now we've covered the basics. Let's now play around with some customizability. So go back to content and here inside of your content area, you can set up more text. So here I'm gonna replace this text with some lorem ipsum and then also use a title. So I'm just gonna uh, put an enter over there and then the paragraph, let's pick an H5. So let's now see how that looks. Okay, not super pretty, <laughs> but of course we're gonna change this. Now I also want you to add another thing, and that is for example a price, so for $45 for example, and you can also add a heading for example like this. All right, now our block of text looks like this. As you can see, it becomes super wide, which is a problem uh, because you don't wanna add enters and breaks over here. So then what you need to do is go back to that option uh, we saw before in position and then go to the minimum width and set that to something else. So for example, 350 then it still doesn't work because you need to turn on text wrap and then it will stay inside of the box. That's important to know. So it's not max width, it's minimum width of that box and then a text wrap. And wrap means that the text will wrap inside of the box that you say like, hey, stay inside of this box. That is what wrap means as you can see right here. So let's now style this tool tab a little bit. You wanna go to the style tab, then of course go to tooltip. So the color over here is the background color. Normally in CSS, color means text color, but here it means the color of that box. So you can change that to a transparent color. So for example, put it on white, and then also put the opacity on uh, something like this. So it becomes uh, almost transparent. Then if you hover over the image, you can see that it's now transparent, but it's not perfect yet. So we need to add a few more things. Let's first add some padding. Let's just add 30 around all the edges. I wanna add a little bit more on the left and right because that just feels a little bit better. As you can see over here, that's perfect. And for the border radius, I'm also gonna do 30 on all sides and that will make it look like this. All right, super nice. And then we're gonna add a trick to add the background blur. So inside of CSS, this class is called, let's go to the preview page. This doesn't look very good. <laughs> let's refresh it with cache. Okay, <laughs> that looks better. As you can see, you can. this class is called this. So what I've done for this tutorial, super easy. I have put a little style over here that you can use. So if you copy this, you go to your, your website, you go back to your dashboard, you go to Elementor, custom code, also a pretty new feature, not super new, but pretty new. Add a title, for example, hotspot, blur, background, and just add the styling in over here and click on publish. Where you wanna do that? On the whole site, yes, that's okay. So everywhere on the whole site where we're gonna use that uh, hotspot, this is the background, that's okay. Let's just go back to our uh, final page, uh, which I just closed, so I'm gonna open my preview again. I'm gonna scroll down, and now the background blur is there. Okay, now one last thing is how you can add colors and even a button. So how you can add colors, that's actually really easy. 
uh, because that's already built inside of the editor. I'm gonna refresh this page so you can see that blur. Um, what you can do is go to your hotspot, go to the second item, and for example, uh, let's say that we want also a, a read more over here. Uh, read more, and that is going to be linked to a website. So for example, google.com. All right, so let's see how it looks right now. Oh, it turns red. Why is that? Well, that is because our link uh, on this website is colored red. So if you want to change that color, you just want to select it and then go to the color over here and just select another color. Super easy. Also for your prize, just make sure to pick another color, something like this. And then it looks different. <laughs> of course, you can also use your custom colors. You can see right here, here's your hex code. For this website, I'm going to pick that nice purple. And that looks already nice. So this is the easy part, right? Just changing colors right inside of the editor. Uh, now your read more, of course, is gone over here. You don't see it. You can still style it over here, for example, underline it. And that is this design that I also had in my other website. So now, how do you add a button? So let's just add a button to the next one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a third item. Okay, let's change the position. Okay, right here. I'm gonna put it on the bottom or maybe on the top. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the top. That looks nice. Go back to content. I'm gonna delete that. I'm also gonna delete that. And now what you wanna do is you wanna add a button. So Elementor has a button, a standard button that you can use. So if you go back to that page and you just add a normal button, with a simple class in it. So normally what you can do to add a button is uh, super easy. You type in slash button again and you add in a text, for example, buy more. So then it doesn't work. Why? Well, because we are in the visual tab. So if you just cut this, go to the text tab, then over here, add your button, then go back. Then you can see your button over here and here it looks like that. If you wanna add a little break, just go back to the visual tab and over here, add a enter. And then as you can see, the button is now under. If you wanna add a smaller enter, use shift enter, and that will also create a break. Or if you want, you can go to the text editor and add a brr over here. <laughs> and that will also work if you know the basics of HTML. Okay, so now, oh, it's uh, broken again. So I'm gonna add my uh, brr over here my break, let's just add another one. Okay, that looks all right. And now we wanna style this button. So that's why I had this little code here. If you add class, then button, so you could just copy this whole thing and, and replace it, that's a little bit easier. Paste it over here. Now you can say this button has a class and it's called button one. And now we can style this button in our code, which I've also prepared for you, super easy. So what you can do now is go to the page again that I provide and just copy this part. And what does this do? It adds a style for the button. It adds a background color, normal color for the text. It deletes the border because by default, I think Elementor has that border, as you can see right here. Let's say that you don't want that. You can delete it. Border radius, so it has nice rounded corners, padding, so it adds a little bit of space inside of the button and the font size. Uh, and of course you can change everything right here, makes it super easy, but make sure to add it before the last style and just paste it. Because here's, this is where the style, this style sheet starts and then this is where it ends. So just paste it over here. I will just first save it and then we'll show you how to, how to change this. So click on update again. So now dot button exists in the CSS and it also exists now in our HTML. So now it doesn't work because we need to reload this page. So I'm gonna click on update, gonna reload this page. Let's scroll and let's see. All right, and it even had a hover animation and you can link that to uh, uh, somewhere if you want to. So if you wanna link this button to somewhere, it's the same way as we did it in that other link. You just select it right here, you click on the link and then you type in google.com for example. And now it is linked. You can edit it and even let it open in a new tab if you want to. And now this button is linked. Let's test it. I'm gonna go back to the page, click on refresh, and as you can see, now it opens in a new tab and it goes to Google. How cool is that?
And of course you can change this CSS. If you want other colors, you just go back to your code and you change the colors that I put in. Maybe you can change the border radius to make it less rounded corners, right? So maybe you only want, uh, for example, five pixels rounded corners. If you click on update, you go back to your page, click on refresh. Now you can see that this button has only five pixels of rounded corners. Super easy to do. You just go in over here, you change the colors, you change a few numbers and you see what's going on. The font size, of course, that's obvious. And I know most of you guys don't, well, actually, I don't know how much people know CSS, but this is, you know, pretty basic. Just know that the color is always in CSS is always the text color. And the background color, of course, is the is the background color of the button. So FFF means white. And this is that purple color. So you can just change the hex codes over here. You can leave the border if you want to. Maybe add even a, a border. If you guys, by the way, want me to make a basics video about CSS. So you have a little bit more control on, on how to make things in Elementor. A little bit more custom with CSS. Then just let me know. Also, for the people that are new to CSS, know that this part is for the hover. So as you can see, the background color changes when you hover from the normal color, which was first the background color, that becomes the text color. And that's also what you can also see over here, right? It changes from white to pink text, from a pink background to white text. So that is what's happening over here. Don't worry, you can just test it. You won't break your website. It's super safe to do. So I hope that this video gave you a little bit more confidence with that tool and also a little bit more ideas. So it's not so limited to just a, a title and a text. And I hope that this also inspired you uh, from a design perspective because I really try to make it look a little bit cooler than uh, what, what comes straight out of the box. So I hope that you also appreciate that effort. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Try to help each other as a community. And then I hopefully will see you in the next video on living with pixels.